according to the next speaker, we have a speaker from Mexico, Dr. Mero Alberto Segura Lozano, talking on the epidermoid cyst of the antelatal cisterns approached through a minimally invasive um, route. Um, Dr. Mauro Segura, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Good evening to everybody. Uh, first time, I want to congratulate why I'm sharing my screen. I want to congratulate to Narin because this big effort to join a uh, huge uh, amount of gentles, the skull based surgery. I'm very happy to be Professor Arais, Goel, Schwerer, Nair, of course, Narin. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. You could this, share your screen uh, if you want. Yeah, thank maybe. You. It's ready. Uh, for today, I would like to show the experience about the epidermosis uh, located at the posterior fossa. And again, this is the 11 virtual international conference. This is a big effort. So, congratulate, Ned. Thanks, thank you. And I would like to show this uh, universe because uh, this is our, our topic. And we are talking about the hyperactive dysfunction syndrome of cranial nerve. My previous professor, Talk about that, but in our experience in the last decade, we have received as for treatment uh, more than 2,200 patients. As you know, the most important casuistic is our trigeminal neuralgia. As you can see, 83% of all the patients have trigeminal neuralgia. Uh, about 50 of them go on their microsurgical treatment. One of them, microsurgery, endoscopic. Uh, radio frequency, even gamma nine. But today we are going to talk about the secondary type of trigeminal neuralgia according to the crew classification from Italy. And in this case, only 14% of patients have this entity. And among these 14, the epidermosis represent 1.4%. This is very small amount of patient, but in our casuistic, this is the largest uh, registered in Latin America with this uh, pathology. In our experience, the first place is occupied by postherpetic and the second place by epidermoid cyst. Uh, this tumor is a low growing brain tumor of embryonic origin that manifests in the light there, uh, later in the life. You can see three peaks in the third decade, in the fifth to sixth decade, and a small peak after 70 years. It's very strange, but it's very common. Another important point is the anterior lateral sister of the brainstem is the most frequent location. We published this uh, a couple of years ago because we are not completely agree with the pontocerebellar cerebellar angle location. It's not a located tumor, but uh, extended tumor into or under the anterior lateral brainstem system, as you can see in this picture. Also, uh, I want to say that they represent about 2% or less than 2% of the patient presenting of the first symptom as trigeminal neuralgia. Of course, uh, the high definition MRI, Fiesta or other companies would be the best uh, imaging study. I, I, I want to point in this trip, three item as our philosophy is very important for the young neurosurgeon the first point is preserve the life of the patient. It's not the number, it's not the picture, it's not the uh, amount, it's, it's not the time. The first objective for surgeon should be to preserve the life of the patient. The second point is do not damage or do not cause any more damage to the neurovascular structure adjacent to the surgical site. In this case, the um, brain stem. And finally, eliminate the cause, talking about the tumor and talking about the epidermal sister. Uh, of course, to remove the tumor totally or almost totally. This is an example. And um, the next slide, we, uh, this is a reference, but we don't call the uh, pontocerebellar angle sister tumor located. We prefer to call anterolateral sister. It's published. In this case, uh, 
the previous professor uh, Mungia talked about the morbidity obesity patient. I, I, I'm not going to repeat, but in normal weight patient, we prefer the supin position. It takes about eight minutes to, to do the preparating position much shorter than the sitting position. That's why I prefer to reduce cost, to reduce exposing of the brain, to reduce fatigue of the surgeon, and uh, of course, to limit risk of the surgeon. Uh, last year, we talked about this 10 step. I'm not going to repeat because it's the same that you all everybody do, but uh, especially I'm going to, to point at the we call last year subasterional, it's a mistake. The, the perfect site, the exact site for the craniectomy should be the infra site, at least uh, about less than two centimeter. As you can see in this picture, we don't know more than 18, 20 millimeters is enough to the microsurgical approach. Uh, We're talking about a small nerve, less than five millimeters. So we don't need more even when you use uh, endoscopy. Of course, we don't never use a uh, brain retractor. And talking about the, the tumor removal, we do the debulking technique. And finally, in some cases, it's possible to total removal, including the implant area. And the last point is hermetic uh, closing of the dura mater and uh, soft tissue. This is our table. Uh, you can see this is our series. Uh, we received 33 patients, including infratentorial and supratentorial located. In this table, only we include the infratentorial and also located at the anterolateral system. Two of them prefer, and the patient themselves decide for the gamma knife. So we exclude this for this information. Average age 43 years, no different about trigeminal neuralgia. And most of them from Mexico, some from Portugal, Spain, Peru, US, etc. Our timing for anesthetic is about 213 minutes. Uh, for surgery timing, it's about uh, three hours. Talking about the tumor removal, uh, double time of the trigeminal neuralgia. Stay in days less than three days, and our follow-up is um, average 36 months. Uh, there is no difference about uh, right or left side. All of the patients have a good evolution. That means there is no uh, deficit or neurological deficit. There is no complication that cause disability. Uh, some of them have minor uh, complication like uh, short time fistula, uh, like short time fascial palsy, or maybe uh, paresthesia. I will show you in the next minute example. This is one of the patients, and as you can see, it's possible to do this by 18 millimeters. This is our approach to the angle. You have to close some. Okay. For it's very important to pay attention in this area. The tumor, it's never uh, invading, it's never infiltrating to the arachnoid. It's not an invasive tumor. It's a uh, benign tumor, uh, it's not invasive. Another point is that the, it could be uh, accepted, the tumor, but in fact, it's a monocompartmental tumor. Uh, this is a high velocity uh, record. However, I will sh show you another angle. We have to remove all the, all the uh, angle at the deeper in the surface and the cranial, caudal. And as you can see, we are able to remove most of the tumor. And in this case, it was possible to remove the implant area. In order to time, I will show the next. This is the preoperative MRI. You can see always a big tumor, not more than four centimeters. And this is postoperative 
also without too long. The next case is very important. It came from Portugal, very interesting athletic man. It, it, I'm going to reverse because this is very important. We don't do this uh, sorry without all the element. Uh, technology should be very close to the surgeon and the patient. Uh, to open this bone, uh, you can see almost 15 millimeters of uh, spessor of the, of the occipital bone. And finally, our minimal invasive craniectomy, 16 millimeter, and the same. First step, open the arachnoid. Second step, the bulking of the tumor. I'm going to run in faster because this is not interesting for this chart. And little by little and piece by piece, we are removing the epidermal cyst. And finally, in this case, the tumor was located and the implant was located at the fifth nerve. So we try and try, and finally, it was not possible to remove the implant area. In the next, uh, next pic, we will see. I, I will show you. This is the seventh nerve. This is close to the implant area. We should be very careful, very obsessive to remove all as most possible the tumor. And we are on the fifth nerve. Please, if you pay attention, this is the seventh nerve. This is the fifth nerve. This is a implant area. It's embedded into the trigeminal nerve favors. So we decide to to leave this small, maybe less than four, five millimeters, in order to preserve the sensitivity and facial uh, integrity. So after five years of follow-up, the patient is very happy and running marathon every every month, every time. So that means residual tumor for us. This is preparative study. This is postoperative. I'm not pretty sure if this is a residual tumor or uh, it was taken two days after surgery, maybe health one. And if we have time, uh, I will let you another complete resection. But in this patient, the pa uh, they have, she have the same step, open the arachnoid, removing by the bulking. We only use aspiration, only single aspiration, no CUSA, it's not necessary. Removal of the implant. But in this case, the patient have extension to the supratentral uh, region, to the uh, intra, uh, to the mesial area of the lower temporal lobe. So we are very close, you can see implant area. We are removing, taking a picture. And this is right side surgery. So you can imagine at the bottom, there is the temporal lobe and some area of the residual tumor, we intentionally leave. In our opinion, there is no risk for these cases. Integrity of the neurovascular structure. The, the most possible we prefer not, co no, not coagulate the veins and integrity of the surgical area. Okay, a little of hemostatic, surgical. And finally, this is the postoperative, sorry, uh, postoperative MRI. I'm going to run the video. This is preoperative. This is postoperative. Please, you pay attention. This is the extension of the tumor. Most of the tumor is located at the anterolateral, left anterolateral sister of the brainstem. And this is postoperative, this is gel form. And in the last picture, gel form, this also is gel form. However, there's a, here a, a, small, a small amount of tumor. In the medial side, here medial size to the temporal lobe. It was not uh, visible by, the, by this approach. However, the patient remained asymptomatic. 
Uh, here we can see the infra supertemporal limit. Here is the preparative. I know this is no ideal picture for uh, epidermosis, but this is the coronal view I have. And maybe, again, maybe this is the residual tumor without any symptom, not epileptic, no confusion, uh, no any symptom. So we decide, as same than other patient, to so don't remove and don't do another supratentoral approach. And um, well, finally, I don't have the surgical view, but this is a largest tumor that you can see, including all the anterolateral system on the left side involving the trigeminal nerve. This is postoperative. And in this case, here, we left this uh, mesial temporal lobe uh, tumor and some area in the uh, turcasilla cellar. So the same criteria. So we, uh, this pain have asymptomatic. This was um, finding. So we decide don't remove the remaining tumor. And every year we are doing the um, pituitary biochemistry test, of course, and MRIs. Well, in, in order to the time, I'm going to show our opinion. This is another case. Some, some cases like this, we have to do, as uh, you know, a uh, two-stage approach in a supertentorial and posterior fossa approach. Uh, they will be topic of the next and in another chat. Finally, our conclusion, uh, our study of the epidermosis case is the, uh, the brain sting is one of the largest pools in Latin America and based on the excellent long-term result obtained, we propose this as minimal invasive microscopic approach of the best treatment. And this three points I would like to, to emphasize. First, comprehensive anterolateral sister anatomy of the brain stem as a 3D space concept. This is the most important. I'm, I'm sure that most of the people, some of the neurosurgeons have different criteria. This is not pontocerebellar angle tumor, definitely. So second point, this is a no septate but monocompartmented and not infiltrative tumor. It's only located under the adjacent arachnoides. It never invaded. We analyze it and there is no invasion so we don't have to be worried about to total removal, including the arachnoid, just inflammated, not infiltrated. And third, complete of two total excision without implant zone is the goal of the first surgery. The first surgery, as, as Mefti says, it same than meningioma is the best surgery. And we recommend to, the, to do this to the young neurosurgeon. So thank you very much. I would like to stop here in order to hear your opinion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Dr. Sayur. Excellent talk, uh, great experience. And in, in your beautiful videos, you have uh, demonstrated the excellent microsurgical technique, especially for the, um, the trainees and the younger neurosurgeons to follow, um, not disrupting the microcirculation to the nurse when you're trying to remove the epidermoid. The one other thing which also would point out not to spill these contents into many other systems which are not involved to avoid uh, contaminating those systems. Um, otherwise, I, think, I would say it's a, a great talk. And um, Miguel, if you have any more points to add or anything, any tricks or tips from your side for epidermoid tumors. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, another beautiful demonstration of the usefulness of uh, uh, endoscopy. Well, uh, regarding tips and, and tricks, I like very much uh, the sitting position and for CP angle. And uh, in this particular uh, pathology, uh, I think it's especially useful because you have the patient in the sitting position. If you have to deal with a big tumor, just flushing with the saline, the tumor itself is, is coming down and is uh, eliminated uh, himself, you know, and this is a very helpful tool. In the other position, uh, lateral position, uh, all the debris and, 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 the, and some part of the tumor is going to the bottom and you have to rescue that. 
if the patient is at the sitting position, insofar as you are flushing, the tumor is, is coming down and very easily uh, aspirated and eliminated. This is my, my personal uh, way of, of doing uh, things with epidermi epidermoid tumors. Thank you. Thanks very much. And um, uh, Andre Grotenius, are you still there, Andre? Um, uh, yes, I'm still there. I'm still there. <laughs> anything uh, you would want to make a point in terms of epidermoids of the CP angle? No, no, I think um, endoscopy, at least in endoscope assisted, not fully endoscope controlled only, but endoscope. The endoscope really can, um, can be of great help, especially in uh, epidermoids. Because I um, I saw your cases, but I, I I know several cases where it just moves to the opposite side uh, from the the cistern, so it, it's fully in front of the the, the pons and then moves to the other side. And the endoscope can help. The same as you say, sometimes it goes underneath the temporal lobe. So it is not the solution, but it, it, it's it's the visualization that is is of great help. I agree with Miguel that the sitting position is uh, is advantageous. In the Netherlands, unfortunately, the, the, the Society of Anesthesiologists declared that sitting position is way too dangerous. So uh, they advise their members not to um, do any surgeries in sitting position. So I had to be comfortable with the, with the, the supine and, and the lateral uh, park bench. Um, and, and the same, but I have to say that, that to the previous talk also from Andres uh, Servio, um, that is maybe the same remark to you now, Mauro. Um, if you use an endoscope, it's not that easy. I saw that, I, I like that little image that Andres was showing how he used the holder system with the brain. And I mean, that's another neurosurgeon. That's so important because um, other holder systems that we have, or sometimes even computerized, pneumatic, uh, robotic, they are simply not useful for this because you need to have this movement in and out. You, you have to be in, it, it, this is a thermal resonance. It's like learning to dance with each other. The beginning when you start dancing, uh, you step on each other's feet. You have to be it, it has to look smooth. It has to look like this is in concert. And I tell them in endoscopy, make sure that your instrument is always in front of the endoscope. So the moment you see an image and the instrument is taken back, it's not the instrument that you have to try to get back into the field. You have to take the endoscope out until you see the instrument again. Because this is absolutely what Miguel and Ramesh were saying. There is no rear mirror. So that's the danger. It, it, it's a learning curve. It, it's not so easy to do that. And if you do microscopic and endoscopic, trying to do that at the same time, uh, looking to one image and another image looking through the microscope, it's, it's not absolutely natural. And in this first learning period, you can do harm. So be very careful and, and train this properly in a, in a lab before you apply it in, in, in clinical practice. Thank you. Epidermoids, it's, um, it's an amazing part. And um, um, yes, they are, um, even if you leave remnants, well, you know that if you leave remnants with epidermoids, you leave something for your uh, successor because usually it takes 30 years to, uh, to become a problem again. And they will remind uh, your you, you and oh, there was something that he left behind. Uh, because I did uh, quite some epidermoids that were operated in the 70s and 80s. And then I had to do it indeed 30 years later again, when it was steadily growing. It, it, it's slowly, but I, um, I fully agree, don't damage. Um, and, take care of it, make sure that there will know. The patient don't want to see the surgical video. They want to have the result of your surgery. And that's number one. They want to be cured. They want to be wake up without pain. They want to wake up to, see, to know that they are in good shape. Miguel was saying this and Ramesh also. These are more or less otherwise healthy pe people. Um, they don't have cancer. They don't have um, um, any 
other severe problem. Um, they want that's our concern as neurosurgeons. And I what I saw is I, I have to say there are amazing um, talks, amazing lectures. I absolutely enjoyed that. I had to leave for one hour uh, this afternoon after my being uh, chairing my own session, but happy that I returned for to listen to these talks. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Um, any further comments? Um, Dr. Segura, you want to make some comment or? No. No, no, I completely agree. Professor Rice, uh, Nair and uh, Andre. Uh, well, this is just our opinion. I'm based in the last 20 years of experience, but learning from, from most of you. And I would like to see you next time and maybe to share this information and maybe to to, to share the data and, and make an interesting um, paper. Thank you very much.